Okay, thank you guys for coming out on Saturday, or what day is this? Friday, Friday. Uh, here at River Dog. Um, we have Vivian Leva and Riley Calcagno here on the stage. Right here on the stage. Uh, for those, those of you who don't know, uh, Riley um, is a graduate of Oberlin College, and he, he we got to know him right when he started here as a freshman. Somebody, a friend of ours, spotted him in the conservatory and said, "This guy is great. He's got this band out in Oregon and fabulous talent." So um, we've sort of watched Riley grow up um, you know, all through his college years, and then a couple years into his college years, uh, he brought uh, Vivian up here, who he's known s since he was a, uh, you know, that high, and. Um, and so we, we love both of them. They're just the nicest kids, and they're phenomenally talented. Um, I have, I, my car, for some reason, gets uh, Folk Alley on the radio when I come back and forth between here and home. And I'd say uh, once every four or five days, Vivian and Riley come up on uh, the Folk Alley radio. So and they've gotten great um, press. Uh, uh, Vivian's just got a terrific, this kind of, you know, uh, kind of throwback voice, kind of early country. There's something just really, really rich about it. And, you know, both of the kids have grown up in, in musical families and have toured through um, um, art festivals or music festivals and music camps so all their lives. So they're not raw recruits. These, these are seasoned pros, despite their... Their youthful years, and uh, they're so good. And um, anyway, we're really, really happy to have them here. So, okay, let's just get right to it, ladies and gentlemen. Vivian Leva and Riley Calcutta.
nice to see all of your faces and some faces that we just saw a mirror two weeks ago. <laughs> Thank you for returning so soon. How's everyone doing? Great. Great. Sweet. This is one of my favorite places in the world here at River Dog. So it is. Yeah. Uh, it's just always a treat to get to be here. And uh, that was the first song of our new record. I guess we kind of, um, this is sort of like a, a six months, how many months? <laughs> many months late, like Ohio CD release. Uh, six months, yeah. Six months. Wow. And uh, a lot of these songs were written. Ooh. Yeah. Um, a lot of these songs were written in Ohio, and so it's good to be back playing them. Yeah. That one was called Will You, and this one is called Leaving On Our Minds. each other since we were little yeah. uh, that was a little bit of a lie uh, from Terry but Terry Terry tells many truths as well um, so uh, you can't always 
We so it's yeah we're we're not. It's confusing. Need a confusing story. Yeah. <laughs> if you were here with the only slap. Right, so, right. So because, our yeah. Go please no. go ahead. <laughs> it's confusing because we're in another band with two other friends, and those three friends have known each other since they were two. Right. And they grew up in Seattle together. And one of them. That don't complicate it. <laughs> 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 and then Riley and I met in. 2016 when we had both just graduated from high school and we met um at a camp on the west coast and so what i'm trying to yes. say is there's no sibling dynamics no sibling between dynamics. us no um, no <laughs> two since birth <laughs> <laughs> um so we were staying at an airbnb in portland and uh, uh, a lot of these songs are sort of written through voice memos and like across the coasts uh, because i was living in ohio here in oberlin and Viv was living in Portland and, and South Carolina, and this is one we, we sort of parted ways, and Viv, in the early hours in the morning, that one, she, she wrote, we started, and she wrote me, sent me a voice memo, and I finished it in one of the conservatory practice rooms, um, or at least got, made some progress. I wouldn't say finished, but I uh, made some progress. So. With that great chorus. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a song called Hollow Hearts. <clears throat> Throw it all away It's not that easy Find some way to breathe It don't come easy
a friend's mom who owns a, a restaurant in my hometown and uh, got a lot of backlash a couple of years ago um, after asking someone, to, asking uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders to leave. <laughs> and um, she got a lot of threats and um, people were protesting she had to close down for like many months and uh, yeah, I just was, I was on the West Coast and reading all these articles about my really small town <laughs> that, like, never, nobody ever knows of, like, existing, and I just was kind of imagining what she might be feeling.
up until now we've kind of played the order of our record thus far. We were trying to think of a set list and it was really hard and then it started coming to us so easily and we're like, oh, that's how we tracked. <laughs> this is exactly how we tracked the record. I was being so annoyed because I kept, you know, I kept just being like, well, how about, how about Hollowed Hearts? Just like making it seem like it was my idea when really it wasn't. I was just basically cheating off our own record. Yeah. But this is our first divergence. Okay. Yeah. From the, from the no order. order. We're going to play a fiddle tune. Both of us grew up playing this old-time uh, string band music. Um, I was doing it in, in Seattle, Washington, um, and Viv was doing it in Lexington, Virginia. Um, and I stumbled at an early age across some, some cassettes that her parents had made that were digitized onto my, my dad's computer uh, and got really into sort of... <laughs> it's kind of weird. It's a little creepy, actually. I got really into her, like, her family's music. Um <laughs> And started, like, bopping it all the time in, in, in high school um, and learning a bunch of the tunes. Anyway, that's a little bit of a divergence. But we're going to play a fiddle tune from the great state of West Virginia. It's called Shell and Rock. Wow. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a song that I wrote. 
I don't even know when, but it was on my first record called Time Is Everything. The song's not, that's the album's name. Uh, this is called Sturdy Is The Land. Still remember showing this to Riley for the first time and he didn't like it very much. Uh, I, I was thinking about that actually on Red Hand because <laughs> you were all, I feel like I didn't, I had some sort of, I had some productive influences to these songs, but I also had some counterproductive influences. <laughs> so I remember you playing that. And I was like, what is that? I didn't get it. <laughs> the same thing on this one. So I'm glad you don't listen to me. <laughs> on, you know, on this kind of Because these are great songs. <laughs>
Big and leave on the song right in the singer. In your defense, I think the main complaint was, wow, that's way too long. <laughs> Which you might be right about. We're way too sad. That's way too sad. <laughs> When we uh, were first starting to play music together, I had discovered River Dog. My friend Sam Bailey brought me out here uh, to play a gig, and I, uh, you know, probably was way too ratty on the fiddle over in the barn, and uh, I was just, mo this place blew my mind. I was in my, my first year of my freshman year at Oberlin, and uh, I just, it felt like a totally different world, and and so I started pestering Terry and Deborah to, to let me, to let me, like, come do a show with Viv, but the truth was that we had never really played a show, um, <laughs> and so they were very kind to let us come and, and play down in the gallery, and uh, and that was the first time we really, we just sat in a room for like, in, in the conservatory uh, down the road, and, and put together a set for about five hours, <laughs> and then we faked it, and, uh, and it was fun. Uh, but they were, I just, I, I thank them still. And, and, and then every time we needed to get together and play music and see each other and, and write some new songs, uh, they would say, well, why don't you come down and play, play at River Dog and it'll pay for your flight and, and you can have some new, try some new songs out. So a lot of these songs are kind of just here because really, honestly, we were able to play here at River Dog. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and a lot of them on this new record came out. You know, were, were songs that we wrote on those visits where we would play play here. So it's kind of a River Dog album, really, in a way. In a oh, yeah. nice. Crowded room 
to play a couple more songs and take a little break. Mm, okay. I'm going to sing you a, a song about being satisfied, but in sort of a religious way. Um, this, is a, this is not ours. This is our, the first one that we didn't write. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be really weird if we wrote this one. Ah, <laughs> left field. <laughs> situation, which is that a couple months ago when we were still like, you know, this is, a, this is our first live show we've played in since COVID hit, which is crazy and wonderful to be here. Uh, <laughs> live show since, live show. since 2019. Since 2019, which wow. is crazy. Yeah. So, you know, some things are in your memory and what works well and what doesn't work well, but we have this, I think it'll be great. I <laughs> We had this idea that we wanted to we, we wanted to get new merch for this album and we were really excited about it. Um, and we had a, a friend of ours design this really great um, block print that we wanted to, to put on all of our things. And instead of ordering a bunch of you know uniform shirts off the internet, we we wanted to do a lower waist option and do something more fun. So we went to thrift stores and like handpicked individual styles of like thirty different shirts. Um, and print it, hand printed on them ourselves, oh, and it was a really fun project, and I'm really glad that we did it. But um, yeah, if you go back there, you won't. Find, it's one of a kind, everything. So take your time, look through. We have tank tops, long sleeves, short sleeves, um, posters, and then most importantly, it's our new record. It's over there, um, vinyl and CD. So, anyways, enough of that. But there's lots of fun things. <laughs> and just be patient with the person in line in front of you. <laughs> Because it might take a little while. Yeah, yeah. If there's a line. <laughs> um, thank you all so much for coming, and we'll be back with another set of music in a little while. Um, this last one's called Good and Gone. It's the last track on the new record.
bottom of the glass and now we're gonna do a song called cold mountains which we got from a great ballad singer named texas gladden who lived in southwestern virginia um and riley sent this to me i think like within the first month or two of our first year of college in separate places um and we ended up it, it was an acapella ballad and we ended up putting it to to instruments and writing a chorus for it. So it's our version of Cold Mountains. We played this at our first River Dog show. <clears throat> so we uh, clearly haven't learned, like, we've learned some new songs. Though. There's some classics to stay. ago and and this woman came to our friend's concert not the only concert but she came up to them after the show and she said now you you all tune a lot but you're not quite as bad as the only's um, <laughs> so we got a bad reputation in terms of the tuning situation we're, we're working on it though
happy song that I wrote when I was like 19. <laughs> you're really, you ready to go. Wow. Still dreaming, still wishing. <laughs> Wishes and dreams mean nothing to me, mother. <laughs> play a song that I, uh, that I, well, I started writing it one day in my desk home. I don't know how many of y'all know the Overland College campus. I was a freshman in college. I started writing this extremely angsty song in my in desk home, room 245, um, with my, yeah, with, uh, I don't know, I was just, I don't know. <laughs> You know freshman year of college. You, uh, so, the, yeah, it was started around this song. I was going to start explaining about my roommate situation and, you know, the smell of Dascom and everything, but I just thought I'd leave that to your imagination. Um, anyway, I, I started... I, the next person I wrote it with was my friend Sam Bailey, and then Viv added the, the final powerful touch of the, the, the title. Um, I think you added the title. Did you? Anyway. Uh, and this one... Uh, Time is everything.
How y'all doing? You're hanging in there. That's what you're doing. Seems like I'd never see see the day of people wearing sweatshirts again. I know. Oh man. Jackets, blankets. Blankets? Wow. It's kind of cozy. I feel cozy vibes. Y'all feeling cozy vibes? Yeah. Nice. We're gonna play a cozy song. This is a. Uh, from a great songwriter in Nashville, Tennessee. His name is Paul Birch. Um, and this song is called The Last of My Kind.
know we were here two weeks ago um, playing River Dog, but we were also playing a wedding that weekend, and which was a lot of fun. Um, and you know, before the wedding, they they told us everything that they wanted. We they wanted a square dance band and maybe and a country band, you know, different sets. And so we were like, great, we can we can do this. You know, all kinds of country songs, and we write all the country songs and. And then the, the people who were getting married were obviously like, but they need to be happy. You know, you can't. <laughs> don't talk about heartbreak <laughs> or dying or <laughs> any of those things. And and it was so difficult. And <laughs> we were trying to think. And Riley and I were like, oh, we can do this this song that we wrote called Biting All, Biting All My Time. Um, and we started to sing it. And you realize that wow, even this song starts out like talking about drinking yourself because like, you're sa- drinking because you're sad, and this was like the one that we wrote that we thought was happy, yeah. which like it still is happy for us. So this is our happy song, but it wasn't happy enough for a wedding. So, <laughs> we have to play it this week. <laughs>
picking up all my 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 dorm neighbors uh, with us recording that into a boom box um, that I had. Uh, and uh, we still have that like little boom box recording. And I, I really wanted to get it off the boom box because I thought it would be cool. So I had to go to this, this guy Dirk's room and he, he has, <laughs> who's a great guy, uh, but he is like super into like audio stuff. So he like, I had to like, sort of, you know, sugar him up a little bit and be like, Dirk, we like, really need to get this song off the cassette. Anyway, it's very 90s. Um, so that's the story of that. It is all made possible by Rivadoc. <laughs> Thanks, Dirk, for, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dirk, for getting that cassette off. It didn't sound as cool as I thought it did. I feel like I'm not sure, like, I, I you guys probably think this is like a bit. I really genuinely want to know. Does anyone have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Who writes most of the songs, right? Well, 
I would say Viv writes most of the songs. <laughs> uh, we help sometimes. I help out, and sometimes we write them together. Does that be? Yeah. I, yes, I think that you write songs. We both we all, we both write songs, but probably most of them are mine, and then like a the next biggest chunk are co-writes. Yeah. Sometimes I offer one phrase, and then I get like ten percent on the BMI of royalties. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> You can retire on that. Yeah. <laughs> but like that song, I would say, was probably, actually, mostly you. But it was a co-write. Beautiful music. Thank you. song by a, a fiddle tune actually by a, a guy who lives in Seattle his name's Greg Canote and he plays in a, in a, a duo with his uh, identical twin Jerry Canote uh, and they were some of my they do all sorts of great music they were two of my favorite favorites as a kid and still to this day they do amazing tricks they both have really intense forehead creases and so they can pass like a flat pick uh, between their foreheads. Um, and Greg has one of the largest, I don't know if it's one of the largest toy collections in the world, or if it's just one of the largest that I've ever seen, but he has a, his whole basement is filled with vintage toys. Um, anyway, he's really cool, and this is a really cool tune. It's called Old Man Gone. Um, I think 
probably I was still in high school, maybe my, I was a senior, and um, I've always, you know, aspired to actually learn fiddle, and it hasn't happened yet, but I wrote this song while kind of plucking a fiddle, you know, I didn't really know how to play it that much, but um, I, I used to pluck this, play this, but it's a lot easier than Riley does it, so, <laughs> uh, it's called Every Goodbye. Could feel you from a hundred miles away, a heart forsaken. Your pain is clear, stay. Takes hold of people from your side. Nights grow colder with every goodbye. You won't slip slide. A prince across. Watching your breath fog the glass, drawing pictures, telling stories of the past. Time takes hold of people from your side. again to Deborah and Terry for coming on the They do this not just once a week, but twice a week. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. And that's incredible. Yeah, it's so much work, so much love and heart puts into just fostering this amazing space for us to be and, and share this music together. So we just feel so grateful and just keep coming out here because River Dog is also you all and coming out to the shows and, and that's really important. Uh, so come back. And, uh, there's a great Miss Tess and the, and the talkbacks uh, are so, so good. You should come come back on Sunday. We're going to ho hopefully stick around and, and hang out and just be here and, and get to watch a show at River Dog. Uh, uh, so. And thank you all so much for coming. I like People I know people Viv knows, um, that we've known for a long time, people who are special to us, and then also people we've never met. So thank you all, every, all of you, for being here. We really appreciate it. We're going to end with a song that Riley wrote, which is called On Account of You.
anyone who needs to go home. Just start going home. Let's go. This is so cool. Well, we've kind of had a tradition at River Dog of pretty much every show we've done, we play at least one brand new song that we are not equipped to perform on. Uh -huh. um, and it's always been scary, but like a good, you know, always a lot of fun and uh -huh. good practice for us. And so we're going to do, in that, in that vein, we're going to do a, a new song that is just recently finished. Or maybe finished. Yeah. I'm gonna have to cut this one out. I think you played on Capo One. Power. Okay. This one is about this. Um, during the last year, um, we just moved. Both of us just moved to, to Durham, North Carolina. But we were both living in Portland, Oregon. I lived in Durham. Oh, woo, Durham! Yeah. <laughs> And there was, we were living in Portland during this really crazy time. It was like this, the fires and um, out on the West Coast and, and COVID and, and it was just an intense time. And every so often we'd um, escape to this really, it was, I don't know, it, this, this place that started to feel really special to us uh, called Savi Island, which is this really beautiful island north of the city that's in the kind of the flood plains of the Columbia River. Um, and... Uh, this song is, you know, just sort of inspired by that time in, in life and, and the people the we people, were living with, the places, the places, the things, we escape to people, places, and things, <laughs> nouns. <laughs> yeah, it's called Savi Islands.
Take a bridge for water flow Watch the river swell and grow Sunny island, I'm coming for you It's been enough time Sunny island, I'm coming for you You've been on Sing a song.